אני church say amen again. Amen. God is good how often? All the time. And all the time. God is good. Find somebody close to you and say, neighbor, neighbor. God, loves God loves you. And I do too. And, I do too. and if you love, me, you love me as much as I love you, then nothing can break. Nothing can break. I love in two. Now look at that other one and say, I love you too. Good to see you. It is without question again that we have been blessed by the great God of heaven, a God that does not do some things well, but he does all things well. Whether you got money or don't have money, God is still good. Got a peace of mind, don't have a peace of mind, God is still good. Don't know what you got to face on tomorrow, not prepared for tomorrow, but still God is good. Had to fight the devil on your way to church this morning, but still God is good. And anybody in here besides me, you don't just need Sunday morning to give God a praise, but every day of your life you can set aside a moment to give God praise for what it is that he has done in your life. Because I know some of us in here, we waiting on God to give us a Cadillac before we praise God. And we waiting on God to give us that job that we've always wanted before we decide to really give God a praise. But children of God learn how to thank God for the little things that he has done in your life. The Bible says, blessed be the God who loves us daily with benefits. What kind of benefits? Food on your table, clothes on your back, shoes on your feet, roof over your head, you in your right mind. Everybody in again this morning, whether you recognize it or not, you are blessed. Preacher, how you know I'm blessed? You don't know my business. I'm looking at you. You sucking in the same air I'm sucking in. You're blessed. Come on. Come on. God has been good to us. He's been good to us. Somebody say he's been better to us than we can think about being to our very own selves. He's so good and he's worthy of the praise. I'm so thankful um, for the opportunity of being here today. And as I was thinking, Lord, it's almost time. Time flying by, ain't it, y'all? Amen. It's almost time. Amen. I'm looking forward to it. I'm glad to be here. Came down yesterday, had a wonderful time. I came in through my apron on, got to serve the ladies. We had a, we had a wonderful time. 
Amen. Amen. You weren't just celebrated on yesterday. You celebrated every day. I want you to know that. You're celebrated every day in the Lord, and you have worth and you have value in the kingdom of God. You need to recognize that. And Amen. And I'm so glad to have here with me um, the lady that I have elected to be in my life at this moment. She's here with me, uh, Marissa. Amen. She's here um, with me um, on this morning. I'm glad to have my line brother also. He's here with me. Um, in the back, hey amen, he don't want to wave his hand on them. That's cool. Hey amen, he's here um, with me on the day. Glad to have them that came down. And we want to just take this time for those of you that are watching this via Facebook Live, live stream. We just want to let you know that you are just a part of this service this morning as we are. And we pray that you uh, feel welcome. Pray that you will have receptive ears, that you might hear the word of God on today. And if God permits, if you're ever in this area, come and be a part of the things that are going on here at the Sweetwater Church of Christ where the gospel is preached. You heard it from them, you ain't hear it from me, so come check it out. In Jeremiah chapter 37, we're not going there, but Zedekiah, king of Judah, at a time he was uncertain about his future of the people, and he sent for the prophet Jeremiah, and he asked him, he said, is there a word from the Lord? And Jeremiah said, there is a word. From the Lord. Anybody came to hear a word from the Lord on this morning? Follow me to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. And we're going to begin our journey in verse number 1. And we're going to tabernacle around verse number 7. The grass withers and the flower thereof fadeth away. But the word of God shall stand forever. When I really began to study the word of God. I wasn't studying the word of God to preach, nor was I studying the word of God that I might become more knowledgeable, that I might argue with others who are astute in scriptures. But I began to study the word of God because I myself was hurting, and I needed desperately to find a way, a reason to keep on going. And it was at that time that I began to study the word of God and I look at the tunnels and the burrows, as it were, that I began to dig into the word of God. Those things become cisterns of living water. And you find out that the same things that that bless you has an opportunity to bless somebody else. So so I realized that in my study and sometimes, Lord, ooh, that blessed me. It can be a blessing to somebody else as well. Amen. So I pray that you all will be receptive of the word of God on today and that you won't leave here saying, oh, we had church today. But you can say that we well, Jesus was here on this morning. Amen. Yeah. Acts, yeah. Acts chapter three, Acts chapter yeah. three. And we're going to read verses one through seven. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. Um, Acts chapter three, verses one through seven. The Bible says Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a lame man from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he answered them and asked for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently and Peter said, look at us. Bro, we ain't got nothing. (laughs) The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. Every person in this place on this morning that has come to faith has come to know Jesus. Some of you came to know Jesus on a Sunday morning after the preacher got through preaching. Somebody may have came on a Sunday afternoon or maybe it was a a one night during the week during a gospel meeting or whatever it was. But some people don't have the same testimony that they found Jesus in church. 
some people can say that I found Jesus between depression and where my mind is. Now, somebody can say I, I, I found Jesus between a rock and a hard place. Everybody didn't find Jesus in church. So, so I, I want you to look at somebody this morning, look, look at them dead in the eye, and tell them that he met me. Let's try that again. Find somebody, look at, look at them intently, look at them and say, he met me in my mess. That's our message for this morning. He met me in my mess. Here we find Peter and John coming to the temple. It is not like you and me coming to church this morning where we're coming to a room full of people who agree with you and think like you. They are coming to a service where their theology is not accepted. It's not appreciated and not welcome. And they are coming to the temple not knowing whether God will use them like he used Jesus, for this is the first miracle that has taken place since the day of Pentecost. Their power has not yet been proven. Now, had they been in a room full of people who agreed with them, at least they'd have the backup of other people. But sooner or later, you will have to stand up and believe God for yourself. Whether, whether anybody believes him with you or not, people say you have to have faith, but I believe that you got to have stubborn faith. You got to have radical faith, faith that will stand by itself and say, I still believe, laugh at me, talk about me if you will, make jokes about me, look funny at me, but I still believe that he that has began a good work in me is going Going to provide. Slap somebody high five and say, I believe it. Is there anybody here left in church that still believes in the power of God? You don't have to believe it. It's still real. It's still making a way. I still believe. Take my house and I still believe it. Take my car and I still believe it. Sick in my body and I still believe it. Child on drugs, but I still believe it. I believe it in a jail cell. I believe it in a boardroom. I believe it wherever I am. I believe in the power of God. So you have one group who's coming to the temple to say, We've got to hold on to what we've been taught. The religious traditions of thousands of years are endangered by these new upstarts, the, this fresh generation of people in this new doctrine. We, we've got to fight to hold on to it. And on the other side, you got, I serve before you, that we have called a group of untried, unproven apostles coming toward the temple for the first time without Jesus to see if the power of God will work for them in his absence like it did in his presence. They are the Elishas of the New Testament. They, they have caught the mantle but they don't know whether it's going to work or not. And, and have you ever had been put in a position but you weren't sure what to do with the position? You, you are there, but you are nervously there. You're, you're shaking in there. You're praying in there and saying, Lord, if you don't help me, Lord, I don't know what I am going to do. I saw you do it for others, and Lord, I believe you can do the same thing for me. So they're moving into the temple, expecting to find to a fight, but not with a lame man. To fight with the religious mindset that is waiting for them in the temple. But rather it is the things that happen, but as it is with much of the most of the case in life, it is not the destination most of the time that is necessarily important. But rather it is the lessons and the things that happen along the way. You're too busy trying to get to a particular place in your life. And you say, well, once I get there, I'm going to get this and I'm going to be blessed and I'm going to have that and I'm going to see this and that. But it's not the destination oftentimes, child of God. God often shows up at the rest areas of life. God oftentimes he'll show up at the bus stop of life. It is the thing that happened along the way. And along the way to the temple, they found a man. 
Third case, there was a man. He was different from the first two cases. The first case comes to defend their position and their significance against the tyranny of this new theology. And the second group comes to establish a truth that they believe will convert the orthodox into the contemporary understanding of who Jesus Christ really is. And he didn't come for either thing. This man came because he was broke. He came because he was crippled. He came because he was destitute. He came because any crippled person will tell you that religious people are more apt to be benevolent than other people. The begging was good over there. Y'all don't like it when you tell the truth, but this man was, this man had developed a, a pathology, a structure, if you please, around his own dysfunction. He does not come to the temple to be healed. He comes to the temple to get over on somebody. He, he is not like the woman with the issue of blood saying, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I may be made whole. He didn't even ask to be healed. He got up at the bed that morning, got some friends to get him dressed. Then they picked him up and carried him where the begging was going to be good at. Got his cup out of his pocket and started his daily routine. Alms. 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 In our, in our terms, bro, you got 50 cents on you. I can get real quick. Arms. What I want you to see is the explosion that occurs when three different kinds of people show up at the same place, each expecting something different. And yet in the midst of all of that chaos, God is orchestrating the affairs because all of it ain't nothing but a setup for God to show himself mighty. Now, 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 brothers and sisters, I wish I could preach this like I really feel it. I'll get to that in a minute. But this man had been lame from his mother's womb. He is obviously a grown man at this point. So he has had a lifetime of dysfunction. And God allowed it to be that way. He allowed it to go on for years to set the stage for a miracle. I want to make note of that for somebody who in here this morning has had a long-standing problem in your life. That just because it's been there for a long time don't mean it's going to stay for a long time. Sometimes God will put your trouble on display and let everybody see you in trouble, be convinced of your trouble, so that when God delivers you, it ain't no doubt in nobody's mind about the authenticity of what God can do in your life. Y'all might as well hear me preach this morning. And, and, and just, to just tell somebody and say, it don't matter how long it's been going on. God can still make a way. It don't matter how many nights you cried. It don't matter how sick in your body you have been. It does not matter what people have said about you. God can still make a way. Whoever I'm preaching to this morning. Somebody's worried right there. You've been worried about all the chaos and the confusion that's going on. But I believe I'm here to tell you this morning, don't worry about it. God got everything under control. And as long as God is in control, you don't have anything to worry about. Now, when we try to put ourselves in the place of God and we try to rule and reign over our own circumstances and situation, that's when we have a problem. But as long as you let Captain Jesus drive this ship, let me tell you, you ain't got to worry about it. You can go down in the bottom of the ship. You can find you a good corner and a pillar, and you can lay down and go to sleep while the waters are tossing, while the lightning is flashing, while the breakers are dashing. Everybody else is losing their mind, not knowing how they're going to get out of it, how they're going to survive. But you can know with assurance that God is on your side. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. God said, I'll be with you, not some of the way, but God said, I'll be with you always, yes, even until the 
the ends of the earth. God's got everything under control. So, so, so I said, my, my, my first course has already gotten inside the temple. Third course is laid outside by the gate called Beautiful. Second course is coming down the road at the ninth hour towards the temple. And when the second course gets ready to go through the gate, they run into the third course laying down at the gate. And the third course asked the second course for some help. Yeah. And the second course said to the third course, silver and gold have I none. You know, if you're going to operate today, you got to know what you do have and what you do not have. A lot of us trying to have, but we really have not. Amen, somebody. And, and look at somebody and say, I may not have what I want, but I thank God for what I got. I, I may not have what others expected of me, but I got what I got, and I'm content with what it is that God has blessed me with in this life. So, 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 so I, I haven't even got to the name yet, the name yet. I, I, he said, I may not be what you expected, may not look like what you expected, may not sound like what you expected, but I'm still somebody in Jesus. So, so they haven't said the name yet, but, but he said, in the, when he got down to the second verse, he told that man, he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up. And walk in the name. Let me tell y'all something. Demons tremble at that name. At the name of Jesus. Mountains began to rumble at the name of Jesus. When it said disease begins to move at the name of Jesus, there is a name that has been exalted above every name that at that name every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Anybody here know that name? What's his name? In my storm, what's his name? In my depression, what's his name? In my loneliness, what's his name? In my sadness, what's his name? In joy, what's his name? Everything going right, what's his name? His name is Jesus. So he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. You can't walk till you rise up. Come on now. That's why you ought to tell every situation in your life that got you bent over. Enough is enough. I will get up. You think I'm going to stay here bent over, laying down, lame at this gate all my life? Not when I got a walking chance. I got a walking chance. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he said, rise up. What I like about this is that the second course spoke to the third course and said, rise up and walk. When the third course had never even walked in his life. It's one thing when God got you doing something that you don't already done before. But when he asking you to do something that you ain't never done before, rise up and Walk. What is walking? I've been lame since I came out of my mother's womb. He's a grown man. And the power of the text to me is confined in one word. Immediately. Immediately. That's what separates this from a 12-step program. That's what sets this apart from a halfway house. That's what sets this apart from five years of therapy and 10 years of counseling, that all of that is natural help, and that's good in its place. But I'm talking about supernatural help, because sometimes you don't have time for 12 steps to get out your mess. You need God to show up, and you need God to show up right away. Whoever I'm preaching to, I want you to let you know that God can bring you out. It ain't going to take God a long time to do it. All God needs is one step. Come on. Yes, sir. God don't need no 12 steps to get you out of what it is that you're going through. When you make up in your mind that this is the last day that I'm going to lay at this gate, I must rise up. Yeah. Right now. Right now. And walk. 
So the book says that his ankles received strength. Peter took the man by the hand and said, he said that this is important. When you're, when, 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 when you're on the verge, when you're getting ready to do better, only run with people that can lift you up. I need to say that for somebody that was asleep just then. You, 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 you. When, when you're getting ready to do better and when you make up in your mind that you're going to change, things are going to be different. I'm no longer going to lay down at this gate asking for alms, but now it is time for me to get up and be who I really am. And God, let me tell you, you need to surround yourself with people that know the Lord just like you know the Lord. You need to be surrounded by people that can get a prayer through on your behalf. Because let me tell you, sometimes I don't always feel like prayer. And sometimes I need somebody I can call up and say, hey, bro, I'm going through something right now. I got a a real dark moment going on in my life right now. Can you pray for me? If you can't be around me when I'm going through my storm, don't come around when the storm is over. You got so many people, they only want to be around you as long as it is beneficial to them. It's when it becomes an inconvenience and when it hurts them, it's time for you to go on. They're going to leave you like a bunch of rats jumping off a sinking ship. But I know somebody. He ain't like the wind. One day I'm going over here. One day I'm going over here. But my Bible says that he is the same yesterday, today. And he will be the same even Evermore. So, so, so the hand of God strengthened this man's ankles. But the hand of Peter lifted the man up. It's one thing to have the hand of God. But sooner or later, you're going to need somebody to come along and snatch you out your comfort zone. You're going to need somebody to come along and snatch you and say, hey, man, where you are right now is not where you need to be. And and, and let me tell you, you need somebody because truth be told, sometimes we think we're doing good and we really ain't doing too good. Some we walking around here telling everybody our name Paul when our name is really Saul because we think that we're doing the will of God and we think that we're pleasing to God when we are actually going down the wrong road. And when somebody is friend enough to you to come to you and encourage you if you're in the wrong take it that you're in the wrong and learn from the lesson and go on now 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 it would be really something if they did not care about you they did not say anything to you and just let you come to your own demise i thank god for people in my ear I thank, I thank God for people encouraging me because we all need somebody to encourage us along the way. And you need to learn how to encourage yourself too, amen? Amen, because amen, cause we ain't there with you in your house 11, 12 o'clock at night when you got all these worries and cares on your mind, stressing out, stress attacks, panic attacks, all this stuff going on in your life. You got to learn how to get in that mirror, hold your own revival, say by his stripes I am here. He was wounded for my transgression, bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon him with his stripes. I am already here at church all by yourself. So, 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 tell, tell somebody you can come out today. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm in Duval today to tell you you can get out today. Oh, somebody know what it's like to be locked up. Can I tell you something? You ain't got to be in prison to be doing time. A lot of folk in here this morning, you just doing time. You're on a job, just doing time. In, in a relationship, just what I'm doing up in here. I'm just, I'm, I'm just doing time. But Jesus came, not that you may be locked up, but Jesus said he came that you might be set free. Oh, and, I, and let me tell you, I mean, it's not always a physical lockdown. Most of the time, it's a mental Because even though I have a desire, my mind may not have the willpower. The spirit indeed is, but the flesh is also weak. 
So, 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 and that's why it says here that when the man, when we, we test the man's hands, the Bible says that immediately. This man's ankles. Yeah. Yeah, 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 are y'all really hearing what I'm saying? This man goes from all of his life crippled, laid out, depending upon somebody else to do everything that he needs. And this man goes from laying down all of a sudden. What's this? What's going on? And this man that has never walked a day before in his life, he rises up and he walks. And the Bible says in verse number seven that he wasn't just walking, telling everybody, look at me, I'm healed. The Bible said this man came out leaping and rejoicing and praising God for what it is that God had did in his life. So many times God do stuff for us, we try and take the credit. Now, forget about God right quick. We've been praying, coming to every yeah. prayer meet. Yeah. Every time somebody pass a card out, we writing our name down on it. I want you to pray for me. I want God to help me. I want God to make a way. Then when God finally does make a way, you forget about the God that you've been praying to all this time to make a way. Did I not bless 10? Where's the name? That's what he said. That's what he said. So the first course was in the temple, figuring out how they were going to shut the gospel down. The second course was on their way to the temple, figuring out how they were going to defend the gospel. The third course was laying at the gate of the temple, figuring out how he would make some money off the other two. But then the fourth course stepped into the situation and healed the third course. So before the second course could get in there to fight with the first course, the third course boasted open the door, came in dancing, leaping, and praising God. Somebody in here this morning, you got a fight in front of you. But the fight is not what really what you think it is. A lot of times if we would just hand it over to God and begin to give him glory like it's already done, we will see victory in our lives. I have never seen so many depressed and dejected and defeated people in all of my life. Let me tell you, my brother and sister, I don't care what I got going on. I still got a song in my heart. I still got a praise in my mouth from the rising of the sun until the setting of the same. The name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Everything ain't got to be going right for me to praise God. I praise God when everything is going wrong, when I don't know how how I'm going to survive when I don't know how a way is going to be made. You got to learn how to praise God at all times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Never understand us. We want to take the credit for what God does for us. He met this man where he was. And you notice, you notice, they didn't sit there and try and preach a whole sermon to the man. Peter told him, man, he said, hey, he said, he said, silver and gold. He said, I ain't got it. But what I do have, and, and what I do have is not mine either. Because by me laying my hands on you, I'm not the one that's healing you. It's really the power of God flowing through me that's really going to heal your body. So, so Peter said, he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give to thee in the name, not of Peter but of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. They didn't have, he didn't have to lay a second hand on him. Because let me tell you, when God do something in your life, it ain't going to be no doubt that God did it in your life. You don't have to go to get nobody trying to confirm if God is working in your life or not. You will know whether or not God is on your side. You will know whether or not God is working for you. Anybody here know the Lord has been by your side? Places that you shouldn't have been, could have died in, but God was on your side. Stuff that you took that could have took you out, but God was on your side. He'll be with you. 
And what I love about God is you, you got billions, billions of, of people upon this earth, but he can identify with each and every single one of us all at the same time. And he will not get you confused with me. But he knows exactly what I need, and he knows exactly what it is that I'm standing in the need of. He met this man where he was, and the man wasn't even looking for it. Any of y'all ever been blessed and it just hit you, whoops, upside the head? You weren't, even, you weren't even looking for it. God just decided to throw something your way. And let me tell you, when God bless you, what your mama told you when, when you was little, somebody give you something, somebody give you something, what you supposed to supposed to? Say, somebody give you a bone, take it. Next time they'll give you a bone with some meat on it. But he met this man. He met this man where he was. This man was going about his regular scheduled program every day. I know I got, I got to go up here. I got to lay down. I know around lunchtime they're going to be coming through. They're going to have some spare change after they bought their lunch. So I got to be standing out there. I got to be waiting. I got to be waiting. I got, I, got, I got to be ready for these people coming through so that I can receive arms that I can live off of. Man laying out there expecting to get something. But he got more than what he was looking for. Because let me tell you, God will always supersede your expectations. Oh, you looking in the east, God flying out the west. You look, you looking in the north, God flying out the south. God would not fit within our box. That's right. Y'all know we got God in a box in this day and time. God can only go this far. He can only go that far out. He can only do this and he can only do that. But I serve a God that can do exceedingly and abundantly. Above all that you could ever ask or think. You can't even comprehend what it is that God is able to do in your life, but your faith got to step in. What did James say? If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. We got it messed up. We come to God praying, oh, Lord, I don't know what you're going to do. But I just need you to do something. Lord, come and, and do something for me. No, no, you got to come to God with confidence. And you got to come to God with both. Lord, I know that I'm your child. And I am convinced and convicted that you are able to do this in my life. Now, Lord, I put it in your hand. Amen. Can you remember when he met you? Amen. Yes, sir. Can you remember? And let me tell you, most of y'all didn't meet Jesus when you got baptized. For most of you, it probably happened after you were baptized. Along the way. When you was going through that period of, I go every now and then, you know, I, I pray every now and then, you know. I, I ain't really, I ain't really full-fledged Jesus just yet, but, you know, <laughs> I give him 35% of my time and the, the other belong to me and what I want to do. But most, of, most people met Jesus between their own rock and a hard place. Most people really come in contact with Jesus when they have no other choice but to turn to him. And why is it that it takes us to be at our wit's end to meet Jesus? And I found out why. Because some of us, we have so much pride within ourselves that God has to put us through situations to crush us, to break our spirits. In order, and here we are, we running around. Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you, can you help me? And everybody you're going to, they don't have what you need. And after you have went around and asked of everybody, can you help me? Then you remember, what about Jesus? And the thing about him is that he does not hold your forsaking him against you. 
Come on now. Preach, boy. Preach. If he, if he did, it wouldn't be nobody up in here today. We, we'd be all like they're occupying a grave somewhere if God really acted towards us like we act towards him. But he came down to this man's level and met this man where he was. And after that man came in contact with God's meal on wheels, with God's medicine cabinet wrapped up in flesh, after he came in contact with that man, he was never the same again in his life. I want to let y'all know, when you really come in contact with the master, your life will never be the same again. Stuff that you used to want to do, you may still have the desire, but your conscience will burn you up on the inside. Man, I know I don't need to be over here. I know I don't be, you know, it's, all, it's a constant tug of war going on in your life. Y'all remember the cartoons? You had the devil over here and the angel over here. You know, too many times we take the little angel and, you know, thump it off our shoulder. Because what the enemy is telling us is more appealing to our flesh than what the... Every day of our life, there's a pull between our spirit and our, and our flesh. The, 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 the flesh is those things that appeal to, to your desires and, and, and your will and your satisfaction, those cravings that you have. But, but, but my Bible said that we, we got to deny those things of our flesh. And we ought to be desiring the spiritual things of God. So maybe this morning, somebody here, you in a mess. And we know that most of the messes that we find ourselves in are messes that we made. Traps that other people set. You know, you know, you got people out there, you know, that's trying to do you in and stuff like that. But most of the times it's ourselves that's doing ourselves in. Getting stuck in ruts. We get comfortable laying down by the gate. Begging for alms. Well, you know, well, I get four or five people to come through here every day. Man, I'm doing pretty good, you know. I don't see no need to get up from the gate. I'm going to stay right here. Yeah, yeah. And we get comfortable. But we need a Peter to come along and lift you up. Hey, Amen. You don't need to be doing this. God can do something with you. And I want y'all to know, even when people have counted you out, God can still do a work in your life. People, and, I'm, and I'm just so glad that God working in our lives is not based on what other people think about us, what other people say about us, what other people perceive about us. But God blesses you according to what you have done for him. And I'm glad my whole road don't have to be on fire for me to get blessed by God. Because Lord know we be messed up. Half of them sitting there like they've been sucking on lemons. The other half look like they've been sucking on persimmon. The other half act like they're waiting on the funeral director to come through. And you're the only one on the road. Bless the Lord on my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy and divine name. He'll meet you this morning. He'll meet you in the midst of a depression. He'll meet you in the midst of anxiety, sadness, whatever it is that you're dealing with. God says, child, you do not have to go through this by yourself. Amen. That's your problem. You think you're superwoman. And you think you're superman. I can handle it all by myself. When it ain't even yours to handle. Amen. That's right. We sang the song, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. He said, if you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you. Take your burdens to the Lord, not to Facebook. Not to Twitter. Take your burdens to the Lord. Because we want to take our burdens to social media, then wonder why everybody talking about our business. You put your business out there for folks to talk about. That's free. That one in the sermon. But we, 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 we. We can take our burdens to the Lord. And the thing about it, I ain't got to look back to wonder where or not he done fixed it. Come on. 
<laughs> but I can trust in what he has done before in my life. Because let me tell you, y'all ain't just now expecting a blessing in your life. Most of y'all have already experienced God move in your life time and time and time and time again in your life. So it is no secret what God can do in your life. What he's done for others, you know very well God can do the same thing. That's the truth, man. He can do the same thing for you. That's the truth. Thank you, man. Where is your faith? Where is, your, where is your faith that God can help you out? Yes. A young look can't fix everybody's life. <laughs> Open been going with Stephen about 30 years. They still ain't got married. She can't help you out. I look, I look at a picture of Stephen just lumped off. That man, they still ain't. I mean, they've been going together about 30 years. <laughs> oh, ain't finna get none of my money. And, 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 we, we, and we, we call all these, these self-help gurus and we, all these people, we go sit on folks' couches, want folk to help us when Jesus is all the help that you really need. Amen. He's all the help that you need. And if you would trust him, yeah. he'll show you what he can do. Yeah. He'll show you. Yeah. Believe in him. Yeah. He said, all things are possible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To him that believeth. Yes, but we believe as long as we see him working. Mm -hmm. But the minute we don't see him working, we don't believe. We don't believe. our belief gets mingled with unbelief. Yeah. And then we find ourselves like the man whose son was having convulsions. Lord, I believe. Mm -hmm. But help my unbelief. My unbelief. You know, you can be a believer and an unbeliever at the same time. That's a whole nother sermon I get next time. That's a whole, that's a whole nother. You can, be, you can be a believer and an unbeliever all at the same time. How? Because even though I believe, this right here don't look like it's going to work out the way that I think it ought to. I think it ought to work out. So therefore, doubt and uncertainty has now crept in my mind because I don't really see God working on, on my behalf. He'll meet you where you are today. That's right. He'll meet That's you right. exactly where you are. You don't have to stress yourself out. You don't have to worry yourself to death. You can depend on Jesus. You can depend on him. You can hold your head up high with a smile on your face and trust in his salvation. Trust in his goodness to be ever abounding in your life. Some, somebody this morning, maybe you need God to meet you where you are. All right. Preacher, you don't know what I got going on. It ain't for me to know what you got going on. Yeah, right. Long as God knows and you acknowledge him as yes. your helper yes. and as your yes. guide and as your teacher, that's all yes. that you need. Yes. Too many times we want to get other people to intervene in our affairs when all the help you need is standing at the door of your heart and he's knocking. You're going to let him come in. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will come to the door and open, he said, I'll come in and sup with you. I'll come in and make my bow with and, and, and let me tell you, sister, we can fix it. I think he'll take a bologna sandwich. Remember that? You remember that? I remember, yeah. I, I believe he'll tell you. He said, I want to come. He said, I'll sit. He come in and I'll sup with you. I'll make my abode with you. Ain't no better person to have in your house than Jesus. Amen. Amen. Ain't no better, place, better person to have in your house, in your life, other than our teacher and our guide, Jesus Christ. So my brother and my sister, if you're here today, you're standing in the need of Jesus to meet you this morning. He met a man one day by the name of Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus was notorious for being a persecutor. He, he really thought he was doing good. He thought that he was doing the right thing. 
And this man, what I, I really love about Saul, Saul wasn't no uneducated man. Saul was a, a man, he grew up, his parents had to have been, you know, some good people had something going on for themselves because they sent him to the school of Hilla, which was the, the best thing that he could have been sent to at that time. And he studied with all the, the great teachers and the scholars and those things. And he worked there in the court, in the temple, with the men, in the synagogue, and there with the people. But he left all that behind after an encounter on a road to Damascus. When he was going about his way to persecute more Christians and he came in contact with the one he was really persecuting. That's it. God had to knock that man blind for him to really be able to see. And from that moment on, he was no longer Saul, but he was Paul. No longer after that moment did he go about persecuting, but he went about spreading the good news of the kingdom of God. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's no souls up in here today, but if God can work with a man like that, what you think he can do for you? What you think he can do for you? So my brother, my sisters, if you're here today and you're not a Christian, you find yourself standing outside of the ark of safety, you say, well, preacher, how is it that I... I come in contact with Jesus. How is it that I can meet him this morning? How is it that I can have my sins washed away by the blood of the lamb? How is it that I can know today beyond a shadow of a doubt that my soul has been saved and that I am in the hands of God? You come according to Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17. It says, so then faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So one must first of all hear the word of God. What does the word of God consist of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. After hearing one must believe that same word. After belief you repent of your sins. What is repentance? Repentance is a change of mind that produces a change in your action. And after repentance you confess with your mouth the sweetest name known to mortal tongue and that is that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. And after confession you are willing to be baptized for the remission of your sin. Have your sins washed away, Amen. eradicated, done away with, never to come up before you, and this life, and neither the life that is to come, and according to Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. And if you're here this morning, and you in a mess, and you just say, hey, I need somebody to pray for me. You're in the right place. Yeah. For the scripture says that the prayers of the righteous they avail as much. I'm glad somebody prayed for me. Amen. Had me on their mind. Yeah. Took the time and prayed for me. Yeah. I'm so glad, so glad that they prayed for me. So my brother and my sister, if you're here today and you're subject to the invitation, don't put off today for what you plan on doing tomorrow. While you have this opportunity that is given to you right now, why not come to Jesus now as together we stand and sing the song of invitation.